The Quest of Iranan by H. P. Lovecraft. Into the granite city of Taloth wandered the youth, vine crowned, his yellow hair glistening with myrrh, and his purple robe torn with briars of the mountain Sidrak that lies across the antique bridge of stone. The men of Taloth are dark and stern, and dwell in square houses. And with frowns, they asked the stranger whence he had come and what were his name and fortune. So the youth answered, "I am Iranon and come from Aera, a far city that I recall only dimly, but seek to find again. I am a singer of songs that I learned in the far city, and my calling is to make beauty with the things remembered of childhood. My wealth is in little memories and dreams, and in hopes that I sing in gardens when the moon is tender." And the west wind stirs the lotus buds. When the men of Teloth heard these things, they whispered to one another, for though in the granite city there is no laughter or song, the stern men sometimes look to the Carthian hills in the spring and think of the lutes of distant Unai, whereof travellers have told. And thinking thus, they bade the stranger stay and sing in the square before the tower of Melin, though they liked not the colour of his tattered robe, nor the myrrh in his hair. Nor his chaplet of vine leaves, nor the youth in his golden voice. At evening, Iranen sang, and while he sang, an old man prayed, and a blind man said he saw a nimbus over the singer's head. But most of the men of Taloth yawned, and some laughed, and some went away to sleep, for Iranen told nothing useful, singing only his memories, his dreams, and his hopes. I remember the twilight, the moon, and soft songs. And the window where I was rocked to sleep, and through the window was the street where the golden lights came, and where the shadows danced on houses of marble. I remember the square of moonlight on the floor that was not like any other light, and the visions that danced in the moonbeams when my mother sang to me. And too, I remember the sun of morning bright above the many-coloured hills in summer, and the sweetness of flowers borne on the south wind that made the trees sing. O、oh, Ira. City of marble and beryl, how many are thy beauties? How loved I the warm and fragrant groves across the Hyaline Nithra, and the falls of the tiny Kra that flowed through the verdant valley. In those groves and in that vale, the children wove wreaths for one another, and at dusk I dreamed strange dreams under the yath trees on the mountain, as I saw below me the lights of the city, and the curving Nithra reflecting a ribbon of stars. And in the city were palaces of veined and tinted marble, with golden domes and painted walls, and green gardens with cerulean pools and crystal fountains. Often I played in the gardens and waded in the pools, and lay and dreamed among the pale flowers under the trees. And sometimes at sunset I would climb the long hilly street to the citadel in the open place, and look down upon Aera, the magic city of marble and beryl, splendid in a robe of golden flame. Long have I missed the era, for I was but young when we went into exile. But my father was thy king, and I shall come again to thee, for it is so decreed of fate. All through seven lands have I sought thee, and some day shall I reign over thy groves and gardens, thy streets and palaces, and sing to men who shall know whereof I sing, and laugh not nor turn away. For I am Iranen, who was a prince in Ira. That night. The men of Taloth lodged the stranger in a stable, and in the morning an archon came to him and told him to go to the shop of Athok the cobbler and be apprenticed to him. But I am Iranon, a singer of songs, he said, and have no heart for the cobbler's trade. All in Taloth must toil, replied the archon, for that is the law. Then said Iranon, Wherefore do ye toil? Is it not that ye may live and be happy? And if ye toil only that ye may toil more, when shall happiness find you? Ye toil to live, but is not life made of beauty and song? And if ye suffer no singers among you, where shall be the fruits of your toil? Toil without song is like a weary journey without an end. Were not death more pleasing? But the archon was sullen and did not understand, and rebuked the stranger. Thou art a strange youth, and I like not thy face. Nor thy voice, the words thou speakest are blasphemy, for the gods of Teloth have said that toil is good. Our gods have promised us a haven of light beyond death, where there shall be rest without end, a 
and crystal coldness amidst which none shall vex his mind with thought or his eyes with beauty. Go thou then to Athok the cobbler, or be gone out of the city by sunset. All here must serve, and song is folly. So Iranon went out of the stable, and walked over the narrow stone streets between the gloomy square houses of granite, seeking something green in the air of spring. But in Teloth was nothing green, for all was of stone. On the faces of men were frowns, but by the stone embankment along the sluggish river, Zuro sat a young boy with sad eyes gazing into the waters to spy green budding branches washed down from the hills by the freshets. And the boy said to him, Art thou not indeed he of whom the Archons tell, who seekest a far city in a fair land? I am Romnod, and born of the blood of Taloth, but am not old in the ways of the granite city, and yearn daily for the warm groves and the distant lands of beauty and song. Beyond the Carthian hills lieth Unai, the city of lutes and dancing, which men whisper of and say is both lovely and terrible. Thither would I go were I old enough to find the way, and thither shouldst thou go, and thou wouldst sing, and have men listen to thee. Let us leave the city Teloth, and fare together among the hills of spring. Thou shalt show me the ways of travel, and I will attend thy songs at evening, when the stars one by one bring dreams to the minds of dreamers. And peradventure it may be that Unai, the city of lutes and dancing, is even the fair Ira thou seekest. For it is told that thou hast not known Ira since old days, and a name often changeth. Let us go to Unai, O Iranon of the Golden Head, where men shall know our longings and welcome us as brothers, nor ever laugh or frown at what we say. And Iranon answered, be it so small one, if any in this stone place yearn for beauty, he must seek the mountains and beyond, and I would not leave thee to pine by the sluggish Zuro. But think not that delight and understanding dwell just across the Carthian hills, or in any spot thou canst find in a day's, or a year's, or a lustrum's journey. Behold, when I was small like thee, I dwelt in the valley of Narthos by the frigid Zari, where none would listen to my dreams, and I told myself that when older I would go to Sonara on the southern slope and sing to smiling dromedary men in the marketplace. But when I went to Sonara, I found the dromedary men all drunken and ribald and saw that their songs were not as mine, so I travelled in a barge down the Jari to onyx-walled Jaran. And the soldiers at Jaran laughed at me and drove me out so that I wandered to many other cities. I have seen Stethelos that is below the great cataract, and have gazed on the marsh where Sarnath once stood. I have been to Thra, Ilanek, and Cadetheron on the winding river Ai, and have dwelt long in Olathoe in the land of Loma. But though I have had listeners sometimes, they have ever been few, and I know that welcome shall await me only in Aera, the city of marble and beryl, where my father once ruled as king. So for Aera shall we seek, though it were well to visit distant and lute-blessed Unai across the Carthian hills, which may indeed be Aera, though I think not. Aera's beauty is past imagining, and none can tell of it without rapture, whilst of Unai the camel drivers whisper leeringly. At the sunset, Iranon and small Romnod went forth from Taloth, and for long wandered amidst the green hills and cool forests. The way was rough and obscure, and never did they seem nearer to Unai, the city of lutes and dancing. But in the dusk, as the stars came out, Iranon would sing of Aira and its beauties, and Romnod would listen, so that they were both happy after a fashion. They ate plentifully of fruit and red berries, and marked not the passing of time, but many years must have slipped away. Small Romnod was now not so small, and spoke deeply instead of shrilly, though Iranon was always the same, and decked his golden hair with vines and fragrant resins found in the woods. So it came to pass one day that Romnod seemed older than Iranon, though he had been very small when Iranon had found him watching for green budding branches in Taloth beside the sluggish stone-banked Zuro. Then, one night when the moon was full, the travellers came to a mountain crest and looked down upon the myriad lights of Unai. Peasants had told them they were near, and Irana knew that this was not his native city of Aera. The lights of Unai were not like those of Aera, 
for they were harsh and glaring, while the lights of Aera shine as softly and magically as shone the moonlight on the floor by the window where Iranan's mother once rocked him to sleep with song. But Unai was a city of lutes and dancing, so Iranan and Romnod went down the steep slope that they might find men to whom songs and dreams would bring pleasure. And when they were come into the town, they found rose-wreathed revellers bound from house to house and leaning from windows and balconies, who listened to the songs of Iranon and tossed him flowers and applauded when he was done. Then for a moment did Iranon believe he had found those who thought and felt even as he, though the town was not an hundredth as fair as Era. When dawn came, Iranon looked about with dismay, for the domes of Unai were not golden in the sun, but grey and dismal. And the men of Unai were pale with revelling and dull with wine, and unlike the radiant men of Era. But because the people had thrown him blossoms and acclaimed his songs, Iranon stayed on, and with him Romnod, who liked the revelry of the town and wore in his dark hair roses and myrtle. Often at night, Iranon sang to the revelers, but he was always as before, crowned only with the vine of the mountains and remembering the marble streets of Ara and the Hyaline Nithra. In the frescoed halls of the monarch did he sing, upon a crystal dais raised over a floor that was a mirror, and as he sang, he brought pictures to his hearers, till the floor seemed to reflect old, beautiful, and half-remembered things, instead of the wine-reddened feasters who pelted him with roses. And the king bade him put away his tattered purple, and clothed him in satin and cloth of gold, with rings of green jade and bracelets of tinted ivory, and lodged him in a gilded and tapestried chamber, on a bed of sweet carven wood, with canopies and coverlets of flower-embroidered silk. Thus dwelt Iranon in Unai, the city of lutes and dancing. It is not known how long Iranon tarried in Unai, but one day the king brought to the palace some wild whirling dancers from the Luranian desert and dusky flute players from Drinan in the east. And after that the revelers threw their roses not so much at Iranon as at the dancers and the flute players. And day by day, that Romnod, who had been a small boy in granite to Loth, grew coarser and redder with wine, till he dreamed less and less, and listened with less delight to the songs of Iranon. But though Iranon was sad, he ceased not to sing, and at evening told again his dreams of Aera, the city of marble and beryl. Then one night the red and fattened Romnod snorted heavily amidst the poppied silks of his banquet couch, and died writhing, whilst Iranon, pale and slender, sang to himself in a far corner. And when Iranon had wept over the grave of Romnod, and strown it with green budding branches, such as Romnod used to love, he put aside his silks and gourds, and went forgotten out of Unai, the city of lutes, and dancing clad only in the ragged purple in which he had come, and garlanded with fresh vines from the mountains. Into the sunset wandered Iranon, seeking still for his native land and for men who would understand and cherish his songs and dreams. In all the cities of Sidathria and in the lands beyond the Benazic desert, gay-faced children laughed at his olden songs and tattered robe of purple. But Iranon stayed ever young and wore wreaths upon his golden head whilst he sang of Ira, delight of the past and hope of the future. So came he one night to the squalid cot of an antique shepherd, bent and dirty, who kept lean flocks on a stony slope above a quicksand marsh. To this man, Iranon spoke, as to so many others, Canst thou tell me where I may find Aira, the city of marble and beryl, where flows the hyaline Nithra, and where the falls of the tiny Kra sing to verdant valleys and hills forested with yath trees? And the shepherd, hearing, looked long and strangely at Iranon, as if recalling something very far away in time, and noted each line of the stranger's face, and his golden hair, and his crown of vine leaves. But he was old, and shook his head as he replied, O oh, stranger, I have indeed heard the name of Ira, and the other names thou hast spoken, but they come to me from afar down the waste of long years. I heard them in my youth from the lips of a playmate, a beggar's boy given to strange dreams, 
who would weave long tales about the moon and the flowers and the west wind. We used to laugh at him, for we knew him from his birth, though he thought himself a king's son. He was comely, even as thou, but full of folly and strangeness, and he ran away when small to find those who would listen gladly to his songs and dreams. How often hath he sung to me of lands that never were, and things that never can be. Of Era did he speak much, of Aera and the river Nithra, and the falls of the tiny Kra. There would he ever say he once dwelt as a prince, though here we knew him from his birth. Nor was there ever a marble city of Aera, nor those who could delight in strange songs, save in the dreams of mine old playmate Iranun, who is gone. And in the twilight, as the stars came out one by one, and the moon cast on the marsh a radiance like that which a child sees quivering on the floor as he is rocked to sleep at evening, there walked into the lethal quicksands a very old man in tattered purple, crowned with withered vine leaves and gazing ahead as if upon the golden domes of a fair city where dreams are understood. That night, something of youth and beauty died in the elder world.